before winding up the retreat, uh, I want to make a very brief final remarks. <clears throat> During this retreat, uh, I gave many talks and mentioned many things in these talks. They are so overwhelming, sometimes intimidating. You may feel that you are so uh, incapable of uh, uh, using all of them for gaining success. Please don't feel bad about it. <clears throat> Each and every one of us can bite how much we can swallow or chew how much we can <laughs> swallow. Chew how much we can swallow. So, uh, bite how much we must we can chew, <laughs> whatever, whatever. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Eh? Don't bite off more than you can chew. I see. So, thank you. <laughs> so, please don't feel bad about it. Practice whatever you can. Practice whenever you can. More frequently you practice, the better. And uh, leave out all the details for later practice. As you keep practicing, the details, you begin to see the details coming into play. They all will uh, join together at one point. <clears throat> Until such time, don't worry about the details. Take a very simple uh, uh, step and make uh, consistent and repeat uh, you will see one day you have acquired enormous skill in practicing this as we always know all all know that uh, nobody can become perfect uh, of anything overnight we have to keep practicing, practicing, practicing for long periods of time. Jhana meditation and vipassana meditation, as I said, are complementary to each other. In fact, <coughs> I uh, won't hesitate to go a step further to say that uh, in fact jhana meditation uh, unfold the vipassana strength strength of vipassana when we have concentration that concentrated med concentration opens the door for vipassana practice um, I think I, I, I mentioned in the fourth jhana, when, the, when we reached the fourth jhana, uh, among uh, many characteristics, one is uh, purifying the mind, uh, purifying the mindfulness because of the presence of equanimity. And that is very important factor to remember. And that means vipassana is within jhana or concentration meditation. And also in, concent in vipassana, uh, vipassana meditation there is concentration meditation, in concentration meditation there is vipassana. For instance, <coughs> vipassana <coughs> will not become successful without concentration. And concentration will not become successful without vipassana. Mindfulness or sati is always present in any wholesome practice. <coughs> so, uh, 
something to be called wholesome, there has to be mindfulness in it. And therefore, uh, we are practicing something very wholesome, where mindfulness and concentration go hand in hand together to make our wholesome practice more meaningful. Concentration is the is leading everything else. <clears throat> that is why, as I mentioned earlier, Buddha said, uh, "Samadhi pamukha sabbe dhamma." Samadhi pamukha. Pamukha means leader, leading, going ahead of everything. Samadhi is concentration. Even wisdom will open only when there is samadhi. If there is no samadhi, wisdom will not open. In fact, in the, even in the Noble Eightfold Path, there are two other steps after samadhi, right concentration. After right concentration, there is right wisdom. It is the wisdom that unscrew open the gate of, it is the concentration that opens the gate of wisdom. And when wisdom is, o- when the gate of wisdom is open, then yathabhuta jnana dasana arises. That means vision and knowledge of seeing things as they really are take place. For all these things to happen, there must be concentration. So, sometimes <coughs> people might think that when we practice vipassana, we can use vipassana for our daily work, daily activities. Mindfully we do this, mindfully we do that, mindfully we eat, mindfully we walk, mindfully we talk and so forth and so on. Uh, since, since people have heard this for a long period of time, over and over again, they think if they have mindfulness, that is more practical. They wonder, what this concentration got to do in our daily life? We don't have that much time to sit in one place to gain concentration. If we sit in one place all day long, how can we get other work done? in our daily life. Therefore, concentration appears to them to be impractical. But friends, if you gain concentration in the morning, if you practice uh, what you call metta in the morning, and keep up with metta all day long, it may not be a tra- it may it may not be a vipassana subject, but it calms your mind. It will reduce your agitation, reduce your excitement, because you can focus your mind on what you are doing. Concentration trains the mind to focus it on what we are doing. And even vipassana becomes more uh, effective, more strong, when we have concentration. In addition to making the body and mind relax, experiencing peace, experiencing joy, happiness, we also can use that concentration to practice vipassana more effectively. Therefore, uh, Although we want to be mindful all the time, we must use mindfulness with the combination of concentration. It is not the jhanic concentration. Jhanic concentration you can get only when you are sitting in one place still, uh, quietly, uh, for a certain period of time. But 
that training, that training for gaining concentration, uh, gaining jhana, helps you to make your daily life more calm and more peaceful, even if you don't have deep concentration. And therefore, jhanic training, uh, you are, uh, what do you call, aiming at uh, the first prize. Day-to-day life you gain consolated, consolation prize to handle your daily activities more effectively. And therefore don't get discouraged thinking that jhanic meditation is not practical. I like to end the retreat also by encouraging you to uh, practice meditation uh, every day, particularly in the morning and evening. <clears throat> morning meditation is very effective because morning our mind is fresh. It's not uh, started um, our agitation, excitement due to sensory stimuli. After night sleep, when we wake up, probably you might have already experienced it while you were here. Morning session, I think, relatively is much better than other sessions. Of course, here we have uh, you know, group meditation, more discipline, uh, not talking, not engaged in other activities that excite ourselves. Uh, Everybody is meditating, there is a structured schedule, uh, you don't have to worry about preparing food, uh, going out and doing your work, and all these are provided, place is calm, peaceful, uh, we don't turn on our TV loud, loudly, uh, or radio, because we don't have them here. Uh, so there are no, there is, there's nothing to disturb you, and therefore this place is okay. But at home, you may not get this kind of environment. And still, early morning meditation, even at home, is very effective. So that you can start your day with a quiet, peaceful, relaxed, happy state of mind. The morning practice, morning we call, uh, in um, Sanskrit it is called Brahma Muhurta. Brahma, in Buddhist tradition, Brahma means the best. Brahma Vihara means the best behavior. Brahma Muhurta means the best moment, best moment of the day is in the morning. Some people say, I am not a morning person. I am a night person, like uh, nocturnal animals. But if you train yourself to get up in the morning, I believe you can become a morning person. It is all your habit. Anyway, uh, we consider morning is a very good time to start meditation. And whatever we do in the morning when the mind is fresh, will have a lasting effect. And during the daytime you feel more comfortable, less agitated, uh, agitation, uh, less uh, stress, uh, less nervous and so forth. And then in the evening, just before go to bed, have another session of meditation. And go to bed with metta meditation. As I said, start the day with metta meditation and end the day with metta meditation. Perhaps during the daytime you can practice uh, vipassana meditation, but when you go to bed, practice metta meditation, so that uh, you will have a good sleep, you will not have uh, nightmares, uh, you can get up next morning very f- with a fresh mind and so forth. 
uh, when you come to retreats, uh, we, we hear very common complaint. That is aches and pains all over their bodies. This is not something unusual. Not unusual, especially since you are not doing it every day. If you practice meditation every day and then go to a retreat, you would not have the, the, as much pain as you have otherwise. And therefore, one of the things that you have to do to reduce pain is keep practicing every day. And when you go to a retreat, you will not complain of pain. Also, as I mentioned, we all try to live a quite uh, a, you know, quality life that comes from our meditation practice, not from anything material. They may give us certain physical comfort, but uh, life, life, if they don't improve the life's quality. Life's quality is good state of mind, Life quality comes from the healthy state of mind, clean, trouble-free state of mind. Then the entire life would be very, very um, qualitative life, happy life, peaceful life. So with these um, uh, few encouraging words, I like to end the retreat, plus <coughs> You need a few minutes to say something, okay? And then we, when she finished her uh, share of uh, remarks, then uh, we will uh, administer the five precepts and have very short devotional uh, service and then end the retreat. And I enjoyed your being here and you all are very serious, uh, very honest, sincere meditators. And uh, that is very encouraging, and we are very pleased to see that more and more people are getting involved in practicing meditation. And uh, uh, thank you for coming and come again. <laughs>